Hi everybody, welcome to Mr D's Garage, here we are. Um, what I'm going to try to do today is I'm going to try to build a motor. The first ever motor that was built by Michael Faraday or a copy of it. Um, Michael Faraday was able to use mercury to build his motor. I can't use mercury so I'm going to use salt water, brine to build the motor. So let's get started. Let's have a look at what we need. Right folks, here we've got um, some salt and a spoon and uh, I've got some of these little magnets which I got at Boys They're just uh, to make your own little fridge magnets with and I'm going to use those just as a bar magnet. I could use a bar magnet for this, no problem. I've just happened to have those handy. Uh, I need some wire and for that I've got some solder. Uh, it's going to give me some thick wire. I hope it's going to work and we'll just see if that it does work. To, to make some electrical contacts I need a bit of thinner wire. I've got some thinner solder. Could be copper wire again. I've got a couple of leads. There we go. A couple of leads. Uh, oh, my water goes with the salt. And uh, this is a, just a piece of metal just to provide an electric, another electrical contact. And to make my clamp stand, always useful in a, in a workshop, clamp stand. So I've got a broom shaft and uh, one of those spring clamps. Spring clamps. Okay, so let's get started. Right, the first thing to do is to make up my salt solution. So I'm just going to pour some salt into here, into there, and stir it a little bit. You don't have to heat it or anything, salt dissolves as well at room temperature as it does at a higher temperature. Right, that's the first thing. Next thing, I'm going to make the clamp stand. So I'll just put this into my vise here. Um, I hope it works. And just put the clamp around it. We go and now I've already cut off a piece of solder this piece of solder now the idea is to hang that solder get as straight as I can and hang it from the clamp stand and to do that I'm going to need a little loop of solder so I'll just uh, the thinner solder that is I'll just take a little loop take a little bit of solder off there breaks very easily uh, an advantage and a disadvantage if you're doing something like this. Uh, so I'll just make a little loop there, I'll try to get it neat, and from that I'll hang the larger piece of wire now, like that. Just lift it up so that it hangs nicely. Right, so I've got my nice clamped free swinging wire. Okay, now I need a container for my salt water, I forgot to mention that. And I'm going to put that into there. I could have used the jug, but I don't think the missus, Mrs. D, will be very happy if I use the hurt jug. For that. Um, now this, these magnets, um, if you want to protect your magnets you can wrap these in cling film. Um, I'm not going to bother with that but cling film uh, would just prevent any damage from the salt water. I'm going to just nice and easily put that, well I can mess about with this to my heart's content, put my hand in there, won't hurt anything. Make sure the, the salt water covers the bottom of the long wire. Right, I've got to make my electrical connections now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this piece of metal. Could be any old piece of iron or a spanner or anything else. 
I'm going to collect, connect that lead there. That lead will go to one side of the battery. And this lead will go to the other side of my battery. I'm going to just clip it onto that thin loop of wire there. And now I need a battery. Um, I was looking around for a battery before and I found one rather small battery so here we go it doesn't matter you can use a six volt battery I just happen to have this but I better put it there so that we can see what's going on okay now what I'm going to do doesn't matter which end up with which at the moment I'm just going to clamp that lead onto that side of my battery and this lead onto the other side of my battery and that should be able to swing freely if I've got it right that a little bit closer just put it behind the uh, behind so we can actually see what that again and ladies there we go the Faraday motor and that will keep on going as long as we leave it on it won't drive much it doesn't drive much but it's the first example of a motor that we've got and when Faraday got his motor working it was three o'clock in the morning when he got it working and he went and woke his wife up and forced her to come downstairs to his workshop to see this little thing spinning and nobody knew then how important the motor would be. Thank you.